Um, hello, everybody. My name is Erica. I'm from the Netherlands. And I would like to introduce you to Ismaila, and he's sitting next to me. And Ismaila is from the Gambia. And we met in Holland, and he came to the Netherlands last month, and we were not able to do the interview. So I thought maybe it's a good idea to do the interview now. And Ismaila is back in the Gambia. Hello, Ismaila. Hello, Erica. Hello. Thank you so much for inviting me to this interview. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, to it Ismaila, because um, you have a very interesting project going on. And as I was telling you, you were coming to the Netherlands and then you contacted me and you said, oh, Erica, let's be friends. And uh, I said, well, I have a company called Zebra and I'm also having a media uh, channel. So I would like you to uh, interview you to see what you are up to, to if you come to the Netherlands. So you said to me, I'm coming to Holland and I'm coming also to Germany to learn about agriculture. And um, while well, you are a farmer and you wanted to come here to learn, uh, why is it so important for you to come to Europe? Okay, um, thank you so much uh, for the interview. And uh, coming to Europe to learn about agriculture is um, an eye-opener for me. Because um, by in the Gambia, we have been um, producing mostly in the local way. And um, there are thoughts that, you know, there are things in Europe that cannot happen here. But also all my mentors like um, uh, Richard Blau and uh, Nick are also Dutch people. And Richard Blau is a Dutch horticulturist. So he has been coaching me for so long. There are things that he will explain, but I will find it difficult to understand what they really are or how to do it. Mm -hmm. So by coming to Holland and Germany, it has given me an opportunity to see firsthand how these things work, how they do it in um, the Netherlands and Germany, and to see how best I can replicate those ideas in the Gambia. Okay. And what did you learn? Um, a lot of things, um, uh, ranging from um, vegetable growing, how to manage vegetables, how to control pests and diseases without using chemicals. So it's like growing vegetables in an organic way, you know. And then I also went on to learn about compost making, you know, in a professional way. So, and then um, most importantly, I also learned um, regenerative agriculture, you know, um, to be specific, permaculture. And then that's, that is an idea that is not very popular in the Gambia. And then um, uh, I'm so excited to um, be among the first farmers to um, think of implementing those ideas here. Yeah. Yeah, you said you are a young farmer from uh, the Gambia. And well, um, we talked about it a lot when you were here in the Netherlands that a lot of young Gambian people, young, young people, for, especially men, are coming to Europe to, well, find a better life, have a better life. And that's a huge challenge for us as uh, Europe, but also for you, uh, for African people, because yeah, the young people say, we don't have a future here in the Gambia or in Africa, so we want to go, come to Europe. Can you explain a little bit how that, that works for in your country? How does it, how is it um, going under young people? How does it work? Okay, um, first of all, I will tell you that um, but there is a notion that um, most African youth, especially Gambians, are lazy that they don't they do not want to work this is a notion that i don't really believe in mm -hmm. because um i am one of those people who believe that um it takes two things for a seed to germinate from a ground and then that is um, a fertile seed and then a very good ground and then you have components like you know fresh um, air sunlight you know together but Many of the youths are very, very enthusiastic. They are very good. They have very good ideas. They want to implement it in the, in the Gambia here, but they don't have the opportunities to do it here. So at, that, at some point, they got frustrated and they, th they think that they have no future in this country. Mm -hmm. So they end up, you know, um, by using the illegal um, way to the Mediterranean Sea to Europe. And then in this, so many youths die. Also, um, uh, one of them, is also a family member of mine, you know, an extended family member of mine also died in this journey. And then I would also know a lot of friends who got who died in this journey, somewhere beaten, somewhere um, in prison along mm -hmm. the way, and then some had to return back with some mental um, uh, problems, you know. 
-hmm. you know so this is a, um, a really big problem not only for europe but also for gambia because these are also youths that um, uh, are the future of this country these are youths that you know um, uh, will develop this country in the future so it's sad that when we have all these um, um, youths who should be the workforce of the of our economy move all the way to europe it's, it's not it's not also healthy for um, our, our country and what is your idea what is your project about yes um this project that i'm i'm, I'm doing is a project to motivate the youth to tell them that there are opportunities in this country that we can exploit i believe there is a lot of opportunities here and then um uh, how do we tap these opportunities this is um uh, my mission and this is my this is what my project is all about i am a leader of a youth organization in our village and by the federation of somita youths and um, uh, our mission is to make sure that youths can involve more into entrepreneurship youths can avoid illegal migration youths can um, uh, we can fight against um, 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 drug abuse and so on unemployment because in the gambia 60 percent of the youths are unemployed 60 uh, sorry we have 60 percent youth, youth um, population and then out of that we have 43.5 percent unemployed 23.5 percent is employed so that is that is way too high yeah. you know and then even those who are employed struggle to meet their family needs because most of them go home with less than 100 dollars or 100 euros in a month mm -hmm. so this project is to show the use that we don't have to seek for job all the time, but we can be job creators for ourselves. So you are inspiring uh, the young men to stay in the Gambia by becoming a farmer. Exactly. Okay. I I am uh, I am a trained teacher, but I quit teaching and then um, uh, went into farming after I started um, uh, leading the youths in our village because okay. I see that I see that there's a lot of um, uh, um fertile lands in the gambia that could be utilized but they are underuse what is happening is that now many foreign companies come and then buy land and then um, uh, produce vegetables mostly for export why can't um, uh, our own use do that this is um, uh, my 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 mission and then you know to show them that we can do it to give them opportunities see them where to get um uh, you know advices from you know we offer them advices we offer them um all kind of trainings you know mentorship to make sure that they can also go into farming and then farming can be profitable for them yeah and you uh told me that you have two farms you have a farm in so uh, somita and in kafuta and somita is a small farm and that's uh, um well managed by your father and your siblings and that you are starting a new farm, sort of new farm in Kafuta. We talk about that later because I was really interested in, well, you have this project and I'm really curious uh, in two things. Let's start with um, the food in, in Gambia. Are people starving from food there? Is there, hard, how is it organized, the food in the Gambia? Okay, um, normally food in the Gambia are normally imported from um, other countries like from Senegal, vegetables normally from, most of the vegetables are coming from Senegal. And uh, we have some foodstuffs like eggs, milk coming from the Netherlands and other parts of Europe, across the, across the world, you know, even um, the rice that we consume so much in the Gambia here is mostly imported, okay. you know, and then this is not also good for our economy because um, uh, it has taught us a lesson, coronavirus or corona pandemic has taught us a lesson. When there were disruption in the supply chains, you know, there were problems with um, food supplies. Most of the prices of foods were also rising um, uh, um, seriously. And now the, 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 um, I can hear the government always complain that the um, Ukraine-Russian war is also causing a problem um, uh, for us. Yeah. You know, our supply chain for cereals and other things are also affected. So now the, 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 the problem now becomes how do Gambia, um, uh, you know, overcome this problem? The only way we can overcome this problem to, is to make sure that we produce what we consume and then consume what we produce. Yeah. So in short, um, most of the things that we consume here are normally imported from other countries. And um, why is why did it happen? You know, because 
I think you um, you have a lot of sunshine. There is rain sometimes. There is a big river running through your country. Um, is it possible to be self-sufficient in the Gambia? Or do you need to import food like we do? We need to import food like bananas come from your country. They don't grow here. I think I think um, uh, we can't be able to grow everything in the country here, but it's very possible that the things that we basically need can be grown in this country. It's really possible. The problem that we're having um, uh, is that um, most of the farmers lack um, the finance to start you know, um, uh, projects that are bigger. Like mm -hmm. most of the farms only depend on the, also the rainy season because they don't have the money to um, uh, you know, install irrigation systems in their farm to be able to irrigate the field and produce year round. And we are also we are only experiencing rainfall for um, three months. So after three months, we don't have any rainfall again till the following year. So um, the farmers here, most of the farmers here only depends on the rainfall. So the, what we produce in um, three months is not enough to sustain us for the entire year. That is one thing. So second thing is also machineries. Most of our farmers here use local um, uh, ways of farming, like um, uh, hose, you know. Um, uh, they are this long um, uh, hose that they use and then make um, till the soil. You know, we have also sometimes we use cows, you know, donkeys that are really, really very slow. And then you cannot plow, um, you know, a big land using that way. Yeah, so, so actually you would like to need a tractor. And a exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. That 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 is definitely needed, you know, yeah. exactly to, to make it faster. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing about that is that not only one farmer can use it, but you know, um, one tractor can benefit more than um, twenty to thirty farmers, or even fifty farmers, depending yeah, on um, the size. Of, yeah, and they all use so, it. Yeah, exactly. So these are you know, an, um, some of the problems that we are facing. And also, you know, um, if you go into the poultry business, for example, you know, I think also um, the the importation of products into this country is also um, discouraging so much so many farmers you know because production cost here is um, really high we almost buy everything you know we, we almost import everything most of the poultry feed is imported into the country most of the um, chicks poultry chicks they all chicks are imported into the country the mm -hmm. the medicines are imported into the country the feeders the drinkers are all imported into the country so um, uh, almost everything is imported almost. So what happened? Um, uh, because we produce also in a very small quantity, and then we lack subventions, producing poultry in Senegal or in other countries is way cheaper than producing it in the Gambia. Yeah. So they can um, uh, flood our market with cheap poultry products, you know, like uh, like the like um, the meats or the eggs. You know, they are so cheap than ours. Mm -hmm. So that is forcing most of our businesses. To, to 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 quit poultry production. Mm -hmm. I had a poultry farm, you know. Um, I told you that I had a broiler farm, you know, where I have about two to three hundred um broilers. But I had to quit because I was having a problem selling it. Mm -hmm. You know, if I sell it at four hundred and fifty, I will sell it at a loss. So I must sell it at at least three hundred dollars. But what was happening is that if you go to the market, you can buy chicken um full chicken at one hundred and seventy five for in for imported chicken. Yeah. So I could not compete them. No, but you have to, because you said it's a challenge for me to um, grow my own food and to have my own food in the Gambia. So we don't need food from the other countries anymore. What will be the break point then? How, is, how do you see it that it will change? What is needed then? Um, uh, to, 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 to realize this, the government also has a role to play. The government, the government must protect um, the O's that us, the local producers. You know, not only our government, but also I think um, our governments about like European governments also protect um, uh, you know, us somehow. Because if, if they are allowing their farmers, for example, to import a lot of um, uh, their, 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 their products like um, uh, eggs and whatsoever into the country, you know, they are forcing some, so many use out of business too. Yeah. Because um, uh, farmers here have been complaining many times to the government that when um, foreign products flowed out, flowed our markets, we, we, we run at a loss, but it's still the willingness is not in there for them to protect our borders to make sure that, you know, local farmers can survive. Yeah, I will give you a, 
Yeah, that remembers me of the example that you gave to me, like with furniture, like if I would import it, then I would destroy a local furniture maker because he cannot uh, make the furniture. So you have to uh, improve your uh, local market to get a better, uh, even if it's a bit higher price, but then you, improve. can you uh, give that example again? Exactly. Um, I know of, of friends, I'll give an example in this way. I know of friends who are carpenters, yeah. but they had to quit. And then some went through the bad way to Europe. Some went and then looked for other jobs because they think there is no business in making furniture anymore. Mm -hmm. Because what happened is that when they make furniture, for sale, the furniture will be there for more than three months or even more that nobody buys them. Sometimes they have to sell it at a very cheap price. So it goes. Mm -hmm. Why? Because imported furniture, second imported um, secondhand furniture from Europe are flooding our market and people can sell them at a cheaper price. Yeah. You Is know, that um, about clothes? Is that also all the clothes that we bring to Africa? It's not a good idea. No, 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 no. Um, uh, these are just specific products. Okay. There are things I am um, specifically. I'm talking about products that we produce locally in our market here. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, for clothes, you know, most of the most of our clothes is imported. You know, we do have um, local um, clothes that we usually um, prepare here, and they are very good in the market. People buy them a lot. But when it comes to furniture and uh, agricultural products, that's where the problems are. You know, um, many houses in many houses where you go now. You will find out that um, uh, you don't have um, uh, Gambian made um, 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 furniture in their house. All their furniture are imported furniture yeah. because but they are more durable. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because because they are more durable and then they are also very cheap. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Yes. Well, let's talk about your farm. You have uh, a farm for food. What um, kind of vegetables do you have in your farm? I have a series of um, uh, vegetables, and then um, I do grow tomatoes, um, aubergines, uh, cucumber, pepper, you know, green pepper, name it, a lot of vegetables, mm -hmm. depending on um, uh, my market study, because normally I will study the market ahead and then, um, you know, try to see what will be needed in the market in three months' time or so, and then that's the kind of vegetables I will, I will grow. Yeah. I also have some um, fruit plants in there, like um, oranges, lime, um, papaya, uh, shower shop, you know, and a lot more. Yeah. And is water a challenge for you? The water yes, supply? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Water is a challenge for me, especially in Kafuta, where um, uh, the, the, the land is um, four hectares and uh, only um, almost half of it is irrigated and they're not even fully irrigated because what we normally do is that we I have... Um, um, reservoirs, you know, small reservoirs that is built out of um, cement, and that's where the water is um, deposited. And then I will take bucket, buckets, you know, or containers, fill them with water, and then um, water the vegetables, you know, and then the plants. It's really a very big challenge. So, what are your plans for the future? If uh, you say I have a farm, I have two. You have two farms. One is a small farm in so so Somita, and you have a big farm, uh, four hectares. Well, big, but a farm for four hectares in Kafuta. What would you like to have or to do with it, uh, for make it profitable? Okay. Um... I have an idea that, that I'm working right now, and then um, but this I learned um, during my visit to the Netherlands and uh, Germany, which is um, permaculture, because um, my idea about farming is to make it profitable, to be able to employ so many people, and then to make it easily replicable by other farmers, that other farmers can easily, um, uh, you know, um, copy the way I do it and then do it do the same, yeah. you know, yeah. Because that, that that's very important, you know, for us to be able to sustain um, ourselves. So um, the idea of permaculture that I'm trying to do um, is inspired by regenerative agriculture, where I will have um, plants, you know, um, animals, you know, um, vegetables, all kind of, you know, fruit plants, you name it, and then in an, in a kind of an ecosystem that will be balanced, and then that will be self-sustainable by itself. Um, I will just try to explain a little bit what the, how that works. Um, if I have, for example, a poultry farm in the in the in the in the garden, there, 
then the manure from the poultry will also be used to fertilize as fertilizer for the for the, for the crops. If I have if I have sheep or goats in the farm, the the, the fertilizer from the sheep or the waste from the sheep and the goats will be used as fertilizer for the plants. So that is like um, a self-sustainable way that I don't I don't have to buy um, artificial fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And then also um, uh, the mixture of plants will make sure that you know um, uh, so much um, insects you both useful sometimes not all insects are useful anyway. But you have both the useful insects and then you know the harmful insects. But then um, by it will operate an ecosystem-like structure where these animals will devour animals that might be, that might destroy um, the, the 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 crops. You know this is inspired by the way nature works because if you look at nature, if you go to the forest, you can see all kind of fruit trees. But you know nobody goes there to water the forest. Nobody goes to the forest to ap apply fertilizer or so on. So this is the um, idea that I'm trying to develop to make sure that I use less water. To water my plants, that um, uh, the cell soil can be um, um, very, very rich in nutrients. That I don't have to buy fertilizers because if I don't buy artificial fertilizer, then that means the products are very healthy, and then also the costs will be minimized. Because if you use fertilizer, over time the structure of the soil is destroyed, and um, uh, your input in the farm increases over time. Mm -hmm. But when you use natural means, the structure of the soil gets better, and then your input in the farm decreases over time, and then your profits increase. Okay. Um, well, you have uh, explained to us how the farm um, needs uh, some some things, you know, to get started. And you said it's my project is about to keep the young. Uh, men in the Gambia to work at my farm to get inspired to get young farmers who want to also start a farm get inspired by my farm well um you said you went to the to Europe to learn from us uh, that's what we are trying to do that's what uh, uh, our foundation the foundation who is in Holland want to try to help you with it like Nick wants to help you and Richard wants to help you like I want to help you to promote your project but what do people in the in the world can do for you uh, to help you out? Because, well, it's really easy, and we know that that people from Africa are asking for money, and um, we talked about that a lot when you were here. Like it's so easy uh, that the white people did that all, uh, all through the years when they did it, did it with missionaries, send them there to help the, the black people, you know, to get a devolve, to get knowledge there. But it was not so helpful. Um, and it's very easy, of course, to give money. But, um, and I think you need money. That's what we talked about too. You, you need money to get started. But um, it's really important also uh, that we talked about that, how we can empower you. That it's about empowerment of people from the Gambia and also in Africa. Uh, to do it on your own you know there is of course a government that has regulations and maybe corruption I don't know or maybe hard things but um, what is your idea about um, how we can help you because we talked about that we wanted to do it in a new way instead of just giving money and then well you get started and of course you need money but I would really want to to, to uh, if you can explain it to us Okay, um, first I will try to rectify one thing that you said, um, not about getting started, but how do we um, move forward faster because the garden is have already started and it is in progress. Of course. Yes. <laughs> so um, about that, um, about your question, um, any help, for any help to be sustainable, it has to be beneficiary driven mm -hmm. or community driven not donor driven most of the time what normally happens in the previous days is that um but donors will come to the, um africa or to um the gambia or to many parts of the world and they will say okay um but we see that you know people are struggling with this so i think you know they will need this and then they will fix it there but maybe that's not exactly what the people need you must ask them what they need and they must be at the center of the management of um that 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 um, benefits for it to be sustainable. 
but otherwise then it, it's not sustainable because when the donors leave then every everything goes so um for my farm the 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 the, the needs or the things that i need uh you know of course um it all entails finance but more is like um a tractor um the technical know-how that is advises you know just like richard is doing because richard has been doing this for a number of years now and then um uh, that has you know helped you know increase my knowledge in um, 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 um agriculture or what i do and um this is also very important because um yeah. first is the is, is, is irrigation you know because irrigation is very very really really very important without water there is no production because um after the rainy season we have to reduce the um uh, the, the, the the production into a small scale just for us to be able to manage um water in it but um furthermore we have you saw it when i saw some send you some photos that we were using hose to make um to till the soil which is also very very difficult so a tractor will also help you know in tilling the soil and not only me but also all the farmers around and um about the tractor you know because you know it's a machine it needs to be sustainable and we must make sure that the tractor is also there for a number of years to come and then that and, and then after it's worn out then we must need we, we, we need another tractor so for that you know anybody who uses the tractor including um, my farm itself you know pays an, um, a small amount of money um, but that will be kept in a in a, in a specific account to um, uh, maintain the tractor that after you know it if it has a problem it can be used to maintain the tractor and then if we need a new tractor in the future it can be used to buy um, uh, um, a new tractor in the in the, in the, in the future and then, and then um, um, these are some of the helps that we need there are many more but I think the technical know-how is the, um, uh, is, is really 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 very important that um, uh, European farmers and the Gambian farmers can exchange knowledge you know maybe do exchange visits somehow if, if possible to learn from each other how they do it and then how we can do it better because um, growing up, I learned that, you know, for example, in Europe, that our weather are our weather is totally different, that the way we do agriculture is totally different. But going there, I see some, some um, but that's most of the things that we do in the show, what you do in summer there and what we do here is almost the same. And I wish that's... Mm. Point of view is different. And I would like to emphasize that because a lot of people from Europe and from the world probably think that if we give money again to the, to Africa, then it will have no, um, um, how do you say that? That it won't help because we always give money and it also is about mindset. And I was wondering what your project is uh, doing about that to um, improve the, the, the perspective, you know? Yes, um, uh, that, that, that's really very important. Um, but there's a lot of money that has been formed here by um, donor organizations, um, yeah. by the EU, the UN, whatsoever, you know, into our governments and then sometimes the beneficiaries don't um, um, have any effect or don't receive any benefits from it you know sometimes it is it ends up in the hands of the corrupt um, uh, corrupt government officials and so on so all these all these things are involved and then um, uh, you know that's a very good question when you say okay we have been pumping so much money into into the Gambia how does this make um, how does this project um, or how will this project develop in a different way that you know, it can be sustainable and then it can try to sort that problems out. You know, um, agriculture is uh, something that is really difficult to start, especially in a large scale. But in a smaller scale, you know, you can try. And then we have been, um, so, so many of our farmers, you know, for example, have been um, do it, um, uh, doing it only in the rainy season and so on. So. If you are helping people, it must be people who are really um, uh, doing it, and it must be the beneficiary beneficiaries exactly, not to um, uh, foundations or organizations, you know, that might um, uh, use in a different way before it reach, reaches the the, the 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 farmers themselves. Because there are projects in the Gambia, for example, that comes and then there's the, there are a lot of money that are, that are involved in those projects, but most of the money money is spent on workshops, you know, um, uh, symposiums, and then all other stuff. And at the end, you know, the farmers, you don't see the impact in the farmers. So I think um, uh, Europeans or anybody who wants to help must try to link directly with the people who are really involved in farming. You know, um, uh, that, that is how, you know, because there, with a little help, it can change the way they do things or the way they see things or, or in fact, their entire output. 
Yeah, but if, when 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 it falls in a different hand before it gets to the beneficiaries, a lot is missing. I would like to talk about that a little bit more, Ismaila, because um, like I said, it's so easy for us, you know, as white people to send money and then we hope that Africa, everything is going to be okay in the countries. And it's just not like that because we talked about empowering and we talked about um, that the people in Africa want to be self-sufficient. Um, well, in the old days, you know, that um, we helped, of course, by giving money and you, you explained it. But what is, how does it go with the mindset? You know, do people in Africa realize that, and you said it, you know, you are, uh, uh, you need education, but that you are aware also that you can be in charge of your own life. Yes, um, I think, um, I believe the biggest challenge um, Africa is having uh, and that includes the Gambia is the problem of um, the mindset. Mm -hmm. The battle that Africans need to win to change their situation is the battle of the mindset. Um, if we, if you are able to change the mindset of the people, then um, they work in their own interests and in the interest of a greater good. I will give you an example that um, when I quit um, teaching and then I want to go to become a farmer, there were so many people who told me that, come on, um, uh, you know, our grandfathers have been farmers before, our fathers have been farmers, and they are all staying poor. How, are you, how sure are you that if you become a farmer, you can make it? This is the problem of Africa. So, um, and Gambia in particular, because that's the country I know. So what we do is that we try to empower these youths. We do have training, trainings, you know, for example, in, in, in Yep Africa. And then we also have a foundation that um, by, um, Nick is running, where we bring these youths together. And then also from my village, you know, our, our, our association, the Federation of Center Youths, we bring these youths together, try to um, uh, inculcate a positive mindset in them. That, you know, our future lies in our own hands. We do not want um, a future that will be dependent on um, uh, donations, a future that will be dependent on the support of foreign people. Mm -hmm. Our destiny lies in our own hands. What we want is that we can lead and then the support, you know, can be, can, can be following us. We don't want to, the, the people who will be supporting us to lead us and then tell us, okay, this is what you need to do with your support. This is what you need to do with it. No, that's not what we want. Mm -hmm. What you want is that a youth with a positive mindset that they can um, uh, decide what they want for themselves. You know, they can take the take up the challenge and say, "This is what we want in life, and this how how are we going to do it." And they want to stick on it, and then whatever support comes their way, that's a push for them. Mm -hmm. Before normally, um, uh, um, um, uh, don donors will come with conditions like, "Okay, we want to support you, but." Um, uh, you have to do this, you have to do it that way, you have to do it that way, you have to do it that way. Maybe maybe I do it because I just need the support, but not because I, I have passion in doing it or because I want to succeed in it. So that's not um, 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 healthy, you know? So um, the mindset, we're working on that, and then um, that we try to, you know, talk about it every time. Even with um, friends, when we sit together, we try to discourse, you know, try to inculcate a positive mindset. And, and I can tell you, it's succeeding because... Um, I have two or three of my friends now that are into farming. And there's another one who is um, uh, you know, pursuing me, telling me that if you know of a land, tell me I want to buy it and then start farming. Yeah. And then, and then many also who are, far, who are farming or doing other businesses are getting more um, enthusiastic, you know, thinking that, okay, I can do this and then I can, I can you know, gain something out of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting because that's what you said, like um, you are learning to see okay this is my plan and this is what I want to do with it and this is uh the way we live because it's really hard for us you know it's not good for us to tell you what to do we can no. advise you but it's your choice that is really important yeah. that you learn that too yeah, yeah so yeah. in general you say okay I have a farm I, I need stuff because I need for example a tractor with a plow so I can go faster you also said you need a sort of water uh, irrigation. Uh, irrigation so you can 
water uh, outside the raining season. Mm -hmm. You also, you, you told me already, uh, because we talk a lot at, uh, about what's going on on your farm, and you said, I need a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what do you want to do with the greenhouse? Okay. Um, many uh, In the Gambia, it's not very common that people do grow vegetables um, uh, in trees or in pots. You know, um, but it's a concept that I learned from Richard, who is also a Dutch. Mm -hmm. He, for the first time, you know, sent me trees and then said, you have to um, put the vegetables in the trees, not on the ground, because in the ground you lose a lot of seeds, you know, and then it's very difficult to control because you have insects and other things coming, you know, cutting the vegetables and so on. So, um, uh, and then this, um, um, these trees must be put in a place where it is secured and where um, uh, they can um, uh, um, be protected from the rain. Yeah. Because water, the amount of water that they need must also be controlled, you know. So that's where we also need a greenhouse to put all these um, uh, trees to grow up young plants, you know, until they are at a height, you know, fit to be transplanted into the fields. Then um, uh, that, that's, that's the time we'll transplant them from the, um, from the uh, greenhouse to the field. Yeah. So the greenhouse is really, really very important to, um, you know, um, produce um, seedlings. Yeah. Okay. So uh, there is a foundation in uh, the Netherlands for uh, your project, and I'm going to um, put it under the video so people can see uh, where, if they want to donate, how does it work? We are still working on that with the people in, in the Netherlands about that. Um, well, um, I think it's really nice that we uh, get an update from your farm now and then, and I will transfer it also in my Zebra uh, account so people can watch it. And uh, I give all the information in the comments below so people can uh, watch your uh, uh, Facebook page also of, of your farms and get informed about it. Um, well, thank you so much, Ismaila, for uh, telling you, uh, for talking about this project of your, and um, I wish you all the best with it. And I hope that we can send this video all over the world so people uh, can check it out and see in what way they can donate or give help for education or knowledge or about farming and agriculture in your country. And uh, well, uh, we talk soon again and see uh, if the, it... Um, well, what's happening on your farm. Thank you so much, Ismaila. Thank you so much, Erika, um, for continuing with the interview. You're welcome. I'm really happy. And then um, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.